Okay, hello everyone. I uh, know this isn't a live stream. I'm just doing this in post, but I want to test this live stream setup I have here with this new green screen. Uh, here, I'll show you. That's what it looks like, so yeah. And we'll be trying it with this real fail of a Greenpeace article on nuclear energy. I mean, yeah, you, you can see it coming already, can't you? And uh, just testing everything out to see if this is something I can actually use for the live stream, but we'll go over this. A lot of this for regular viewers is just going to be review of nuclear energy, so I'm not going to worry about a lot of sources. I'll probably link to uh, refutations to anti-nuclear memes, which just has a lot of really good information about nuclear energy and, you know, busting all the myths about it and things like that, so... Yeah, and they have it here. They start on nuclear power is dirty, dangerous, and expensive. Except it's none of those things. And we'll probably talk about this as the article go on. I don't think it's a long article, but... It says, nuclear energy has no place in a safe, clean, sustainable future. Am I getting... I think I'm getting... I'm getting artifacts all over me. All right, I might have to start this, stop this and restart it. All right, I don't know how much of that showed up in post, but we'll see. All right. Nuclear energy has no place in a safe, clean, sustainable future. Nuclear energy is both expensive and dangerous. It is neither of those things. It is the safest form of power there is. When you look at the disasters that have happened with all forms of power, and how many deaths have resulted from it? Nuclear is actually the safest. You've got like 200 people all total from all those nuclear disasters, pretty much from Chernobyl. You know, so you know, don't put socialists in charge. Uh, <laughs> so there's your problem. But and it's not expensive either. If you take the total cost of setting up a uh, a uh, uh, nuclear power station and getting it going. And you amortize that over 40 years, just saying that 40 years is the life of the uh, of the plant. And so you say, okay, we'll get that as a loan at 6%. And then on top of that, we'll add the operating costs. If you do all of that, you'll be able to deliver power for about five cents a kilowatt hour. That's half what we're paying. So, no, not expensive, not, in, not dangerous. Just because nuclear pollution is invisible doesn't mean it's clean. Well, you know, say the same thing about solar and wind. Renewable energy is better for the environment, the economy, and doesn't come with the risk of a nuclear meltdown. Well, the third one of those is true. I'll give them that. The first two are not. For nuclear energy with modern nuclear power plants, all three of those are the case. So... Uh, Greenpeace got its start protesting nuclear weapons back in 1971. Uh, we've been fighting against nuclear weapons and nuclear power ever since. Okay, so nuclear weapons, they're going about a disarmament. They, they didn't want the, these huge weapons that could wipe out entire cities. And, I mean, you can understand that, right? But then they started conflating nuclear weapons with nuclear power, which are two entirely different things, and they don't seem to realize that. High-profile disasters in Chernobyl and Fukushima have raised public awareness of the dangers of nuclear power. Notice how Three Mile Island doesn't really get a mention anymore. That's kind of funny. Consequently, zeal for nuclear energy is fizzled. Well, no. No, there's a lot of people pushing for nuclear. It's just they're being overshadowed by people like Greenpeace spreading FUD about it. So, the catastrophic risks of nuclear energy far outweigh the potential benefits. Again... When you look at disasters, nuclear comes out far better than any other form of power. Oh, uh, they're more expensive than they take long. No, they're not. I just gave some figures on that. You know, for about half of what we're paying now. And solar and wind are incredibly expensive. They could double that if we were to try to rely on those. Uh, we can do better than trading off one disaster for another. How dare you? How dare you? That, that's what they're doing. Yeah, right. The dangers of nuclear energy meltdowns like Fukushima and Chernobyl released enormous amounts of radiation into the surrounding communities. No, they didn't. 
You can stand right outside the door at Chernobyl and not have anything. And, and I mean, there's everything's growing around there. It's all lush now. Fukushima never did. So, forcing hundreds of thousands of people to evacuate, many of them may never come back. Now, this is the problem with crap like this. Crap like what Greenpeace is doing costs lives. There was never any need to evacuate people from Fukushima. There might have been, say, okay, just as a precaution, we're going to evacuate the people in the surrounding area for a couple of months until the radioactive iodine levels go down, and then we'll move them back. But they moved out so many people, and it's been nine years, and they're still living like refugees, and these people are suffering from heart attacks and all sorts of other things. Far, far, far more people have died from the hysteria around the Fukushima disaster than died from the, the actual disaster itself, which was zero. And, and yet you've got people like this. Well, you have this, uh, this one science, science uh, go on, but podcast upagosity.tv. The podcast started in 2011, and we started, like, I think a month before the Fukushima disaster. And so we've pretty much been following this the whole time. And one of the stories in it was there was a nuclear scientist in Canada who wanted to see, okay, how much of this stuff got into the environment. And it's zero. It's zero. No radioactive elements got in there. No radioactive contamination. None. He got death threats. He got death threats from eco-terrorists because he poisoned their narrative, and they can't have that. So, uh, By the way, worst energy-related catastrophe ever killed, I think, 150,000 people. It was when a hydroelectric dam in China collapsed. So, again, don't put socialists in charge. There is still no safe, reliable solution for dealing with the radioactive waste. Yes, there is. Use it. All right, thought experiment. You got a car. You put gasoline in the car. Weird thing about this car. It only burns 5% of the gasoline you put in it. The rest of it kind of goes in this reservoir. And Greenpeace and the government and everyone's going out, Oh, what are we going to do with all of this petroleum waste? What are we going to do with all this waste gasoline? And you're sitting there going, Why don't we just put it back in the gas tank and use it again? You know? That's pretty dumb, right? It's pretty dumb to worry about what you're doing with waste when it isn't waste. It's energy. You know, but I mean, thanks to government regulations and treaties and things like that, that's all they're allowed to do. But, I mean, it would be really easy to take this energy, run it through the, through the reactor again. And it, there was a thing called a breeder reactor. Um, so even when you have waste you can't reuse in a regular reactor, all you have to do is take that waste, mix it with a little bit of fresh material, and then put it in a breeder reactor, and then you get energy from that. And then the waste from the breeder reactor is just energy for a you know, regular nuclear reactor. So, yeah. Um, not really making much sense to be against that. Uh, da, da, da. The possibility of a catastrophic accident at a nuclear plant cannot be dispensed. Okay. Modern reactors will not melt down. Fukushima was kind of called a BWR, so it was Chernobyl, a boiling water reactor. The reason why Fukushima melted down is that during the earthquake, the systems automatically shut down. Now, you might say, well, that's good, isn't it? Well, they didn't have to shut down. They could have weathered the earthquake very well. And if they had, the disaster wouldn't have happened, because what happened was the reactors, having shut down, could no longer run their own coolants. And so you had these diesel generators that ran as backups that kept the water pumping through the reactors and kept them cool. The tsunami took out the backup generators, and there was nothing to pump new water in. The water that was there boiled away. There was nothing to cool it, and the reactors melted down. Well, if you're using sodium-cooled reactors, uh, like metallic sodium uh, coolants for uranium reactors or molten salt reactors for thorium, they, they can't melt down. It's impossible. 
the boiling point of sodium is too high. It's just not going to do it. It's going to convect it all away, but the sodium's not going to boil away. It's still going to be liquid, so can't melt down. Impossible. Beyond the risks of nuclear power and radioactive waste, the threat of nuclear weapons looms large. Well, then you should love nuclear power, because that gives a profit motive to disarm. Because you know, if you say, okay, we want to dismantle the nuclear weapons, okay, what are we going to do with that weapons-grade uranium that's in them? What are we going to do with that? Well, okay, mix it with some smaller isotopes used in a breeder reactor. There you go. It isn't just bad for the environment, it's bad for our economy. They're expensive to build. I mean, we, we, I covered that. Prompting Wall Street to call new nuclear a uh, bet the farm risk. Every nuclear plant under construction is well behind schedule and at least one billion over budget because of you freaks. You freaks have gotten yourself into the NRC. Look at this. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Go look at its members. See if you can find an actual expert. A PhD nuclear scientist who actually has experience running a nuclear power plant. No, they're all environmentalists. It's crazy. It's obstructionism. The problem there is not nuclear power. It's you freaks getting yourselves, you know, into commissions like that. Cleaning up Fukushima, if ever possible, would cost at least $100 billion. There's no problem from Fukushima. Close up the site. Leave it as it is. It's not leaking any radiation into the surrounding area. Why invest money in a dangerous, unsustainable form of energy when we can have clean, renewable energy for less? Hate to break it to you, sunshine. Solar and wind are not clean. They both use uh, rare earth elements that have to be mined. And solar requires all sorts of crap uh, to be mined for the solar cells. And, I mean, read up on this. Read up on how horrible it is and how much pollution it is. A lot of them for solar are done by strip mining. And it's decimating flamingo populations in South America. Just decimated by the strip mining need to get material for solar cells. Hark! Do you hear the environmentalists complaining about this en masse? And talking about how bad that makes solar? I think not. Yeah. Uh, oh, and with uh, with wind, it's just as bad because you need the rare earth element. And by the way, when they get the stuff out of the ground, basically for every ton of the rare earth elements they get, they also get a ton of radioactive elements. What do you think they're doing with that? There's no Yucca Mountain they're going to store that in. No, it just goes in as pollution. Same thing with coal. And we're just pulling this stuff out of the ground. Well, let's use it. Let's use it. If we're going to be pulling this stuff out of the ground, let's use it. Nuclear energy is diverting attention and investment from the sustainable energy solutions we need. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's just drivel. By the way, notice throughout this whole thing, no links. I mean, they've, they've got a few links. They've got, like, you know, lessons to Fukushima on their own website, of course. But there's no links to any actual scientific articles. Like there is, uh, if you go to, uh, I might put a link to this, podcast.bogosity.tv, just search for Fukushima. We covered it at length. And yeah, this is what these people are like. And hopefully this setup is working fine and I might be able to use it for live streaming. I'm not sure. I just took a glance back over at my webcam and I'm seeing a lot of artifacts. So if I took my cam down in the middle of it, that's probably why, but... We'll see when I look at this in post. We'll see what's going on. But thank you so much for watching. If you sat through all this, then clearly you liked it. So please hit like and subscribe and share this video everywhere. That helps more than anything. And as usual, you can go to donate.bogosity.tv. All sorts of ways to uh, support this channel. Uh, you can also watch on other media, like not YouTube. Uh, I'm over on BitTubers.com as Shane DK. I'm also Shane DK, in case you didn't know, over on BitChute and Library, LBRY.TV. I'm not really happy with a lot of things both of those sites are going, but I've set it up over there, and my videos should be mirrored over there 
automatically. I think library is not working right for some reason, but whatever. There are options, but thank you so much for watching this. Until next time, stay strong and be free.